Yo.
Hello, everyone. Hello. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the stream. Let's make sure everybody's going. Looks like we are. Yay. Hope everybody's having a good night and a happy holiday so far. And I'm going to start some music. So I'm trying this new Windows app, Groove Music, which uh, I downloaded a bunch of music that I don't have to copyright or have copyrights for or anything like that. The music is not copywritten, I should say. So we're going to let that play and uh, I'll turn it down a little bit. But uh, we're going to give that a whirl tonight. We'll try that and see how it works. Alright, it's drawing time. With me, as always, is Toll Dog. Hello, all. So, you went to the gym and now your legs are burning. Uh, well, I wish they were burning more. Yeah. They just, they're just sort of, yeah. sort of sleepy. Sleepy legs today. Your, your biscuits are burning? <laughs> they did. Uh, there were a little. There was a little bit of burning at the beginning. Yeah. And then I got into the groove, and I was just like, "Oh, <laughs> I just didn't have the patience for it tonight." Why does this hurt so bad? <laughs> As you can see, I'm a little bit ahead of the curve tonight, but uh, it it must be done. Oh, and my brush has changed. Look at all these new brushes I got insanity and that's only one tab look at this and look at this whoa well, this Land Lando Hakal Brushian has brothers oh man sisters. yeah totally he's, he's whole family showed up he's totes got him problem is I don't have enough I don't have enough screen to uh, see which tab I should be on oh there we go now we got it nice there's Lando Get you down to 2.6, Lando Calbrushian. So we got another dialogue strip here. I'm gonna I'm gonna be looking down to my right. I'm also using a standing desk tonight. If my head looks like it's in a different uh, sort of place, so I. Uh, Where is your head at tonight, Kevin? I broke down. It's in a different place. I broke down and bought a uh, standing desk from China that somebody sent out at work that was like super recommended. And um, I ordered it last February. It got here. <laughs> I, I paid them in full up front $300. It got here uh, at the end of the summer. I finally got it put together. And I realized that they had sent me the wrong foot for the left side of the desk. So, you know, you have like the big piece that comes down and then it has a flat foot on it. They sent me the wrong one, so the holes didn't match up. So I had to, I mean, my option was customer support in China or just fix it. So I just fixed it myself. Um, made a template, drilled some holes, got three of them right. The other one was not right. So I uh, drilled, drilled six holes for four holes. And um, uh, as you can see, it's working pretty well so far. So. I mean, for that price for a standing desk is insane. So that's low, super low for anybody that's not into standing desks. But uh, yeah, it was a little rough. Is this one motorized? It is. Yeah, it's got a little bar and got, got presets and everything. Well, that is a good price. I know uh, there was one that kept spamming on Facebook um, a while back, and that was about the same price range. Uh, was it autonomous? Because that's what this is. Yes. Yep. Yes, it is. That's them. Yep, they ordered a bunch of them at work. And uh, the, the stuff from work went really, really well. The stuff for Kevin's house did not come correct. And they apparently, okay, they, they apparently have an office in L.A., but I just, I, I gave up. I was like, I just can't, I can't right now. Can't deal with it. I was so mad. <laughs> You're so mad you couldn't even. I could not even. I was so angry. 
<laughs> it's ship with no left feet. Oh, no, no, no. I got somebody else's left foot. Oh. It was a whole mismatch. Oh, I had the wrong left foot. Yeah, it had like a different desk left foot. So I you mean, Frankensteined it. It was the same design and the same width and everything, but the whole pattern was completely different. And so it was a little, it was like slightly too thin. Huh. And so, yeah. But, uh, yes, I did, I did sort of, I guess you could say Frankenstein it. It definitely, uh, uh, took some engineering, but I was not about to, I was not about to be sitting there putting this thing together with like all the motors and servos and stuff that I was putting together and not have it work or wait another six months for a foot to come in. No, no way. Not happening. Well, I've been thinking about getting one for myself. After that testimony, I might still get one. Yeah, I mean, you know, take your chances, right? You may as well. For that, for that price, I mean, I still feel like I got a screaming good deal even with the issues I had. Sure. So, you know. Well, I figured I could get that and, uh, and two nice monitors and uh, you know, move my gaming system over for under a grand. Yeah. That's not a bad deal. No, not at all. Like I said, I still feel like, even though with all the stuff that went down, I still feel like I got a great, great deal, you know? Yeah. On a, on a standing yeah. desk, because these things are just insanely expensive. Yeah, and I mean, it's like, from everything that it looked like, it looked like it compared pretty comparably to the desks we had at DreamWorks other than the like the computer cage and you know it not being a kidney shape yeah yeah that's basically mine's just a square I did not get the one with the cutout shape in it I just got uh -huh. the, the square and it's a it's a 350 pound weight limit and I got the slowest motor I mean I got the cheapest one you know me yeah yeah so. you probably you probably guesstimated how much your monitor and all your equipment weighed first, too. Well, they, they only, they've only got so many choices. So it's not yeah. like, you know, it's not like you, you have much of a choice for that. Yeah. But I knew it wasn't, I knew it didn't weigh that much, because my computer's on the floor. It's not up on the table. Oh, that's right. That's right. So you're only lifting an LCD and, uh, and the Cintiq, which, <laughs> the Cintiq's the heaviest thing. But yeah. that's just because it's older than dirt. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was thinking about doing that and then getting the um, like uh, Chromecast or a um, the uh, the the thing that um, Steam makes the Steam the Steam uh, thing or Nvidia has one too, right? To to broadcast from the card to the to a TV. Uh, maybe. You know what I'm talking about. I think so. I mean, I, I definitely, I definitely know the Chromecast. I have a, I have a first generation Chromecast, and it's, it's straight up terrible. Yeah. Um, it just doesn't. I, I never, I never have a good experience with it whenever I try to use it. Apple, well, I, I, Apple yeah. TV is so. Yeah. So, so much better in that space for me. Yeah. And the Apple TV, you know, that handles the wireless streaming really well, too, from device to Apple TV. Yeah, yeah. It's just like anything else, Apple, right? As long as you're willing to be like, you know what? This is now a lifestyle. <laughs> That's true. They do sort of lock you in. Well, you know what it is? It isn't as much as they lock you in. It's a, uh, they, they spend the effort at, on the... Um, on using the better technology that may not be as popular, you know? Yeah. Because because a lot of what they do is probably pretty open, you know. It's like there's tons of you know uh, systems out there that will read iPods, and there's systems out there that will talk to uh, that will join um, AirPlay. Right. You right. Know? Right. Right. You know. So it's not like the standards aren't out there. It's just there's a licensing fee involved. And so most people, you know, get the cheaper stuff that just doesn't work with it, you know. And, and why would Microsoft pay for that licensing when Microsoft's like, hey, we can come up with our own standard? Right. I get it. But it is sort of, you know, 
it is sort of an ecosystem where everything just sort of functions together really well. Absolutely. And I'm okay with that. Yeah. Like I said, I have it's, no problem. It's, it doesn't bother me. So, you know. As long as they keep making product, products that that I consider quality. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to go ahead, you know, I'm going to plug the, the music because the, the albums that I downloaded, I got them from Free Music Archive. It looks like the artist's name is Kai Engel. And uh, K-A-I-E-N-G-E-L. Great stuff, dude. It's very cinematic. Very. He's got some electronic stuff, some more classical stuff. Uh, there's like five, three, four, four or five albums on Free Music Archive. And uh, really cool stuff. So that's what we're listening to tonight. And may listen to again because so far I did a little sampling before I went live here. And it was, it was cool. I was like, wow, that's awesome. I dig it. A cinematic score for our venture. So go go check uh, go check him out, guys and gals. I gotta check on this. I gotta check on this hand situation here. I'll be right back while I check on that. No drawing for a second. You just get to watch my mug. Move that out of the way. Go to the site itself. I can't remember whether she has on her glove or not. You'd hate to, you know, lose continuity. Oh, I do it all the time. <laughs> yep, nope. Last time I drew her, it was sans glove, so we're not going. No gloves. Sans glove, everybody. Everybody, yeah. Who needs, yeah. Who needs music yeah. when you got me? That's right. The little back street. All right. We'll add a nail and call it a day. See what I'm saying, guys? This Kai Kai Engel is a uh, pretty pretty badass here. That's sort of a cool name too. We'll come back to that. Let's get everything laid in. We'd be glad to be done with all of his effects. At least take a break for a while when he's... Who, our villain oh. here? Yeah. Yeah, he's fun to draw. I like drawing him. That's good. Right now we're having a little bit of monologuing before the 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 quote unquote battle. Well, that's how it always goes, right? Yeah. How else do you learn the villain's motivation? Feels a little bit weird drawing and standing up at the same time. I haven't I haven't done that since art school. Next thing I know, you'll be drawn standing on a balance board. Oh, dude, I should. Just be constantly getting a core workout while I'm drawing. <laughs> All the lines keep going. Whoop. <laughs> is, I guess that is one way of getting ripped. Hey, Cam to hey, Pimp. You could sell that as a DVD series. Yeah. Looks like your uh, looks like your link got deleted. Uh, Cam, so maybe uh, maybe get a little craftier about posting it. I'm not sure how to uh, disable link, you know, not linking. I'm also not sure if you're a crazy hacker bot trying to get me to uh, give you my bank information. Oh, well, good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> If they want your debt, <laughs> here you go. Yep. <laughs> it's 
please take my car payments. Oh. Well, I take that back, Cam. <laughs> it's a hacker bot with style. Yeah, what was the, uh, where, where was the song? Where were you linking to? Ah, okay. I'm familiar with the YouTubes. I just realized this ear is badly placed, because if this is round... And we go from love. Should be like up here somewhere. Ear placement is so important to. Uh, I, I say this as someone who doesn't pay enough attention to it, by the way. So, um, Ear, ear placement is so important to knowing what the the perspective of the head is, right? It's like if you can see me in camera right now and you can see it's perfect because I've got these giant black shapes in the headphones and you can see the white behind it. So you can see my ear is actually above my eyes now as I'm looking down and then the ear goes down below the eyes when I look up and if I turn to the side you can see how one ear goes up. I'm terrible at doing that. I'll just kind of get noodly in the face and just sort of throw an ear in there and and <laughs> always <Migratory> ear. <laughs> yeah it's really it's really important to uh to knowing or to helping give clues about the perspective of the face and how it's set up that makes a lot of sense i feel like if i say it maybe i'll remember it more because i'm terrible about doing it <laughs> just judge yourself a little bit harsher next time Right. Cinematic Orchestra Arrival of the Birds. I'll check it out. That sounds awesome. I, I, you hit two of my uh, trigger words, cinematic and orchestra, so. Oh, that you're going to say arrival it. in birds. Yeah. <laughs> What it has birds in birds. it? Birds! Please tell me those birds are arriving and still leaving. <laughs> they are! Oh my goodness! <laughs> yeah. Cinematic orchestra. Movie score. Love it. I listen to a lot of soundtracks, especially while I'm working. While I'm working. Well, I, I think it makes sense because the soundtracks tend to be, like movie soundtracks tend to be very um, motivated to describe the music, you know, for lack of a better term. Yeah. You know, that's good. That's good to listen to while you're working. Yeah. Uh, soundtracks are about the only thing I could listen to while I was writing code, too. Mm. I can't. Well, EPM. Any, anything with lyrics, I can't deal with uh, writing yeah, you, code. EDM was nice, um, like some sort of dance, electronic dance music, um, and yeah, I, I I could listen with words, but um, it had to be something that I've heard so many times that it became background noise. Yeah, you know? yeah, I could see. Yeah, like I couldn't discover a new album and write code at the same time. Right. Yeah. Yep, yep. I just, the people who compose music, like listening to this soundtrack right now that this guy composed, I'm just like, God, what talent. Holy smokes. And he just took all this, like, he made this and then threw it up on Free Music Archive just in the, in the, you know, 
just to generate an audience, just to get some people interested in what he was doing. Right. I'm like, man, that's awesome. The least, the least I can do is is say, everybody, go check him out. You know. Yeah. Free music archive, huh? Yep, FMA. Now is that um, is that like uh, what did they use for their um? Like, is it copyleft or or what is it? Uh, it well, you can do a search because they have everything. They have you All know, right. uh, music that you have to attribute, and then they have music that you right. don't, and then they have public domain, and then instrumental and all kinds of stuff like that so so they cover the whole gambit yeah absolutely absolutely so cam if you're still with us on twitch where are you where are you hanging out tonight where are you from Excuse me while I flip over, make sure everybody's still cool on the other channels. Oh, Colorado. We were just talking about Colorado. Tall Dog and I were last night. I said I wanted to visit Colorado because I've never been. Uh, now, back in the day when when my dad was still working pretty hard uh, and not retired, he was going out to Denver quite a bit. And he said it was absolutely beautiful and awesome and one of his favorite cities. And uh, I, have, I have friends in Boulder, I believe. So I'm, I'm kind of jealous. That's cool, man. Plus, I love snow, and uh, I hear Colorado gets snow occasionally. <laughs> it's the snow me state. Yeah, I've only, I think I've only been in the airport in Colorado. Definitely been to the airport, yeah, but that, that doesn't really count. I, you know what, though? I'll count... If you ever fly through Vegas, I'll count the airport yeah. in Vegas. Because that's pretty much the same thing as it's, the rest of the town. Yeah, you, you, you can gamble in the airport, so I'm like, oh, there you go. That's it. They got slots in the terminal. Yep. At the gates. That was the first yep. place I saw one of those oxygen bars, too. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I've actually been in Vegas. I spent the night in Vegas once. But, yeah... I, I think even when I've driven cross country, I've avoided Colorado. Like I've always gone the southern route instead of the northern route. Just to just to avoid possible snow problems. Yeah, I think that it was that, and there was like it was well it was during the summer, and it was like rain and stuff oh, like that that was going through the north. Yeah. So instead, I got the incredible, incredible heat. Yeah. Six inches, I'll take it. If you don't want it, send it my way. I'm in I'm in North Carolina, and uh, it is... And for those not reading the chat, he's talking about six inches of snow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, uh, in Colorado on Saturday. Love it. Yeah. That's, uh... And my brother's up in the UP... And he's, you know, they just keep telling him snow's just going to keep coming and coming. <laughs> it's his first winter up there. Hope his wife and kids enjoy it. <laughs> They're youpers now. Is that what they call it? Yep, the youpers. 16 degrees. Okay, so get this. I've got a buddy that I work with, and he's from the Dakotas, and he's traveling home for uh, the holidays. And he said that currently at his in-laws' house, as of today, when he texted them, we were uh, at lunch, it was negative 57 
with the wind chill. <laughs> and so he, he said, I kid you not, he said the last time it happened, he was able to take a glass of water and throw it out the back door and watch it freeze and then fall and hit the ground. And I told him, you have got to get that video this Christmas while you're That's home. That's right. Because when they, they're arriving uh, uh, tomorrow night, and it's supposed to be like negative 60 degrees with the wind chill. That, wow. that just blows my mind. I mean, Toll Dog and I used to live in Chicago, and that was cold. Like, that was cold. Yeah. Like, I would, yeah. you know, I would, I would like, I, it was the kind of thing where I would go to take the trash out, and I didn't want to put on, like, all my Hoth gear, you know? <laughs> and I would end up, like, my, I would just hurt. Like, my body would hurt afterwards. Well, your nose would freeze shut. Yeah, yeah, I, I, but 16, man, woo. Yeah, I mean, and it's like it's like when when with wind chill and everything, and it's that cold, you know, it's like I I wouldn't even you know I it would you'd have to have a good excuse to go outside. Yeah, absolutely. Like the house better be on fire, and even then, I w I wouldn't like necessarily leave the house, right? <laughs> <laughs> 36 negative 36 so what did that feel like what was negative 36 like i bet that i mean you your muscles had to just be aching the entire time right negative 36 on top of pike's peak that's just craziness i bet the skin stings you know well like, I mean, and it gets you like know how dry said, it gets and, and cold like afterwards you're just still throbbing and in chicago my face used to hurt just taking the trash out yeah like it was just yeah. insane you felt like you lost a layer of skin. Yeah, it was just, it was that kind of burn. It was, it was burning. It was kind of burning. <laughs> it was a burning feeling. And it was stiff. It was like your whole face, like, like That's, the, yeah. Like all the muscles just sort of went, Nyeh. Stinging and hard to breathe. Good Lord. Yeah. That's not, like your lungs are freezing, man. Woo! That's just crazy to think about. I mean, like I said, I love I love cold weather. I love snow, but I'm I'm much more of a cold weather person than a hot weather person. But uh, yeah, man. Yeah, I mean that's like within reason, right? Like there's like there's a range where you can say cold weather's cool, but I don't mean frozen weather. Yeah, I mean just like, like when you say warm weather's nice, but you don't mean like 120 degrees in the desert right yeah no i mean i mean like it would be great to have a discussion with people at the local diner about it being 28 you know <laughs> like so you've been, you enjoyed the last couple weekends then oh yeah absolutely absolutely positively or it, where it flirts it flirts with freezing oh yeah totally Yeah, the other day I saw frost for the first time since, uh, probably since March. <laughs> Hopefully there will be more, much yeah. more. Well, I imagine there'll be some in January. Don't get my hopes up, farmer, farmer toll dog with your almanac. That's right. Let me let me read read the tea leaves and see what it says. Yeah. Hey, slim dude. Thanks for hopping in on Twitch. Two thirty a.m. in the UK. That's usually my bedtime here in the U.S. What in the world are you doing up at two thirty a.m., Slim? He must be bored if he's here. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Hey, wait a minute. He's relieving our boredom, I guess. That's what I meant to say. No, no. Hey, I'm not bored. I'm drawing. That's great. I guess I'm the one with the boring life having to provide <laughs> color commentary. <laughs> Sorry, my cats don't do tricks, so I'm going to have to talk to you for a while. <laughs> Speaking of cats, I saw a video the other day of a cat that was, that was, uh, like the owner was 
watching the cat bat a vase towards the edge of the table. And then the cat, like, and, and it's like the whole time the cat and the owner, like, you could tell they've locked eyes. And then the cat just suddenly stops and then bats it right back to where it was supposed to be. <laughs> yeah, because you knew what was going on there. Yep. The cat was trying to insert dominance and finally goes, okay, it's not worth it. We all My know. cats. We My all cats, know cats don't are care. jerks. They are. The internet is built on cats being jerks. That's right. That is that is the fuel for the backbone of the internet. That's right. Soggy in the UK, I bet. Slim, you said you're writing some code. What you what you writing? What's your uh, what's your language of choice? Hey, yeah, well, have a have a good morning. Give us a, give me a follow, and you'll see me every Monday night. Yeah, while well, he's trying to go to bed. Yeah, <laughs> or on YouTube, or on uh, uh, Picardo, or watch me work. Or Arduino. Oh, sweet! Very cool. Very very cool. Soul Dog and I are both developers in in small ways. I write a, I write a lot of Python, so yeah, I used to do a lot of development. <laughs> hey, you now pretty, I, pretty much taught now, me Perl. I know. Now I read log files and 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 answer emails. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I want to start a JavaScript project up again sometime, but... There you go. Yeah. That means my weekend would have to be done on a computer. All right. Oh, there's the audio link. Oh, sweet. Snuck it in. Ha-ha. <laughs> Take that, Twitch. Let me get a copy of it, and I will uh, take a listen here shortly. Let's see. Let's see what you got, Cam. Sweet. Yeah, I'll check that out. Uh... Check that out a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it works. I've got it uh, ready to go, so I'll check it out. All right, let's see. We got to add. I think it's I think it's flats time here. That's the other thing I've got to do is see what I was doing color wise. Color wise sky for him and then she should still be in front of the cabin yeah thanks for trying uh, 10 times cam that's awesome I appreciate it all right let's make another layer and get to flatten this thing One of these days, I need to do like a full-on color tutorial-ish kind of thing. Um, oop, got to check one more thing. Uh, instead of just doing like the, I, I do quick flats, and then like I've said before, I have a I have a colorist who helps out, and uh, he goes back in and does the does the real work, makes it look really good. And so, I will. Uh, I always just like to lay in flats though, just a little bit. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love black and white comic strips and I would love to ink it more, but the more ink you get, <clears throat> the less the less color looks, you know, good and so I want to make sure that we retain as much color as we can. Hey, thanks, Cam. Yeah, don't don't forget to feed your dog, man.
All right, let's start laying some stuff in here. Except less saturated. I love Clip Studio Paints color wheel. Love it, love it, love it. That'll look pretty cool once we start getting things going. All right, let's go grab some white and our bucket. You want to ride up Troy's bucket. That's right. Right now, down here. It's our time. Up there, it's their time. I hope your daughter eventually appreciates that movie. Goonies? She, oh, yeah. yeah. I, hope, I hope so, too. Eventually. It'll happen she gets... eventually. Once she gets over sloth. <laughs> he's, he's just so creepy. I know. I mean, that is a pretty high hurdle when you consider, like, like very rarely do you see anything like that nowadays. On TV, you mean? Well, yeah, yeah, that's true. You know what? Actually, that's true. You know? So, so the question is, here's, here's the question. Here's the question for, for Goonies fans. Is... Would Sloth's character be appropriate today, or would it be too much? Like, do you think it would be seen as offensive today, or do you think he would still be, still be cool? You know, I think that that it could be played by an actor with no makeup who really has some sort of developmental issues. And people would still throw PC cards on it. You think so? As being yeah. like as being like exploitive or something like that? Yeah, like I don't think Corky Thatcher would survive today. Really? I and I don't think life goes on. I th well, I don't. I think it depends on how how his character's portrayed. Yeah. And I think what it would take is it would take like as they're announcing the show to have like the major like charity that's behind whatever you know whatever whatever um, oh like they would need to say this is okay and we they, they would need to go hey this is awesome a great way of showing and giving you know roles to to real people showing that you know like somebody with downs and you know it's like they're yeah. real people too you know and and getting out in front of it you know before before too many uh you know I, I could see people on both sides. I was going to say too many liberals, but I could see conservatives, some conservatives getting getting you know in a bunch over it too. So the question is though, the question I guess would be, is that sort of like, but what you're what you're talking about is basically like typecasting uh, little people as mm. as elves, right? Because then I, I think the real I think the real like the parents and the, the the people who experience this on a daily basis are like, why can't Mikey be a character? Sure. You know, why can't he be played by an actor that has a developmental issue or something like that? Sure. It, and and it's like why why can't we just have the the little people playing little people as opposed to, you know, why can't there just be a little person in this movie? Yeah. You know, and that's true, and that's you know. But you see, you know, you see a lot. Hollywood has a problem with with casting anybody who's not a successful rich white person. Well, oh yeah, yeah, because you they know? they think that the movie's not going to be a success because of it. You know, they're they're, and sometimes some of the reactions are a little ridiculous, and sometimes, you know, I, <laughs> so, I completely like, get. Sometimes yeah, I completely get. There are a lot where ridiculous. people are coming from. Well, right, but like I, I saw, what was it? There was a. 
Oh, there's some, um, I think it was a Chinese story that uh, has, you know, the, the main actor, and I can't remember which actor it is, but, you know, it's a, a, a you know, typical Hollywood leading male are you playing. Talking, are you talking about that Great Wall movie with Matt Damon? Yeah. Yeah, with Matt Damon. And, and Matt Damon's like, hey, look, you know, I didn't steal anybody's job. You know, this was written for the role of this type of person being in there. Yeah. You know, I, you know, he's not Mickey Rooney. You know, he's not playing a Chinese, a Chinese person. Oh God, Mickey Rooney. You know, Wolf. but he, yeah, but he, you know, but people are still like, you know, why are you, you know, they're they're like, you know, why did why does this person even have to be in our story? Yeah. Which I'm like, oh, I sort of understand that. Unless, like, you know, un- unless that's part of the story. Uh, I, I, yeah, but I think, I think that it just conveniently gets shoehorned into all those stories. Sure. Sure. Right. That's, that's going to happen too, you know. But, like, you know, last, like, I haven't seen Last Samurai, but Last Samurai would not be a movie without, you know, uh, you know, an English or a white person in Japan, you know. Uh, I don't know enough about the like the the background of the story really to know that particular in Last Samurai. But I could see but, them. I could see them make a movie called literally called Seven Samurai, and yeah. just, and just make it all white people, just whitewash the whole thing. Well, if they're going to do it, it would be a, it would be a, a, an ensemble com, a comedic cast, you know, today, because that's the only type that they do with like that, like Ocean's Eleven or something like that. Yeah. Or even worse, they would put they would they would try to get Jackie Chan in there, you know. Ugh. You know, that would be as t- much as I love as much as I love Jackie Chan. Trying that to make be, him a samurai would be horrible. That would be terrible, terrible thing to do. An absolutely terrible thing to do. Yeah. This guy looks so plain without his... his face. Without his face thing? His tats. Gotta have him, gotta have him tats. Gotta throw the Mike Tyson on him. But he does take care of his teeth. And that's admirable. That's true. It takes a lot of work to make him that white. And he had red eyes. Welcome back, Cam. May your may your dog's belly ever be full. So watching you uh do these uh fill these seed fill operations i was uh watching i got halfway through the uh a documentary on the history of the amiga oh yeah and uh, and they uh they're talking about um andy warhol doing a live demonstration of using it like when they launched the computer they took debbie harry's uh photo and digitized it and he went over it and uh you know, add the color to it, like in, during a live presentation. That's awesome. And the whole time, like this software was written pretty much just for this presentation. Yeah. And the whole time, like like one of the engineers is sort of like talking uh, while uh, Warhol's doing the work, and he's and he's sort of guiding him. It's like, oh, you can use this brush and this brush, you know. And the seed fill was crashing about fifty percent of the time when it was being used Ouch. you know going into it and they're and they're talking about this and then he goes and grabs the seed fill and the guy's just like you know just waiting <laughs> for this live presentation to crash and it went through just fine and like all the engineers in the back were just like <gasps> oh. <laughs> how, how did that happen <laughs> you know because this was their this was a huge huge like like they had like a live orchestra, and they, I mean, this was the big launch, you know. That's awesome. Well, and it's and it's Andy Warhol, right? You know, and this is the first time Andy Warhol used a computer for anything. Yeah. You know, because this was this was what I think it was eighty four, 
because I think the computer came out in '85. Might have been early '85. So he was. You know. So he was like painting with a mouse. Yeah. Not even really painting. He was. It was literally like, like he was. He he was doing bucket fills and, you know, dragging lines. You yeah. know, the old old school stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? Now we're gonna switch it up. See if we can get a. See if we can get a different brush to give some. This brush is called Leaky Larry. I like how Aww. a friend and like. Wow, look at that. Um, I like how he, he, like we were talking about before, just started kind of like running out of brush names. <laughs> he started literate, uh, uh, there. Uh, he, oh, he started basically like using Garbage Pail Kids. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. That's right. It is like Garbage Pail Kids. That would be funny if that was like his name generator was just pulling random Garbage Pail Kid names. Uh, knowing what I know about him and his work, and the yeah. the people who I work with now who are friends with him, yeah, I would say that that is a very strong possibility. <laughs> he even wrote a Python script to do it. Did you, I like uh, that brush. Leaky Larry? Yeah. Looks sort of uh, Crayola-ish. Yeah, it's interesting, know? isn't it? It looks like uh, Crayola on, um, like, rough paper. Yeah. I may, uh, I may try and use it for, uh, for the comic next time. I don't care. What are they going to do? Stop reading because they don't like your brush strokes? You'd be surprised. <laughs> All the fan letters coming in. I had one. I, there's this one dude on Facebook who uh, comments every time I draw one of the uh, the princess characters. Or, you know, because uh, the princess character here in first panel used to be separated so it's she's two combined characters right now right and uh he absolutely detests the way that i draw her like anytime i post a picture or anything of her or whatever he, he i mean he he literally is like i cannot wait until somebody else draws her she is so unattractive right now and it, <laughs> and the reason the reason he doesn't like the way i draw her is because it, it's she's not hot to him which is just so messed up. like. But it's true. You do not draw her very hot at all. So messed up. I am not attracted to that character. You're failing me. Psh, that is not my job, sir. I'm glad you found my alternate Facebook account. <laughs> yep, that is, not, that is not my job. Yeah. I always I find that interesting because like I, I I see a lot of it happening in anime quite a bit you know, and I know some of it is sort of the tongue in cheek you know let's make fun of the the people who are really into this stuff, but there's so many fan art pieces yeah. that are just like, hey that character never wore a bikini well she does now she, you know she does now. <laughs> You know, it's like, oh, well, she was just, she was just a nice, friendly maid. Not anymore. Even, even Cam is getting in on it. So disappointed. <laughs> oh, see, you lost the Colorado vote. I know, I did. It's true. Why is she, she's so unattractive? It's like, well, sorry. So sorry. Well, maybe you're just trying to draw realistic females. They're not all, they don't all have to be beautiful. Yeah. That's I, a. I say that she is a character in a comic strip and. 
anything more than that is uh, unrealistic. So that's true. <laughs> that's true. Your expectations are already leading people astray if, if they're already expecting something more than that. <laughs> That's the best way to handle it. I'm sorry my pixels do not amuse you. <laughs> That's exactly right. I will try to draw more shapely brush strokes in the future? Yeah. I am so sorry, Sensei. You know what you need to do? Is you need to have a spell backfire on her someday that, that makes her pen up for like you know, for two or three strips. Well, I I, I draw the other uh, on in the Gnome Syndicate strip. Miss Keebler, yeah. Miss Keebler, pretty much is pin up. Like I draw her That's extremely right. pin up. And so, yeah, I just find it funny that that like men men on the internet are looking to me to draw attractive females for them. <laughs> in a in a medieval cartoon comic strip. Right. You right. Have, you have a responsibility to me. Right, and when you look at, like, and it's her character design fits in with all the other character styles, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, she's, she's kind of having a moment right now, you know, so there's a lot of, she's dealing with a lot of stuff. <laughs> she's got uh, a lot going on. She does. Her hair is half pink. Yeah. She's two people. She's got, she's got some issues happening right now, so, you know, give, give the lady a break, will you? And they haven't invented concealer yet. Give give the lady a give the lady a break. Give her give her a chance. And the sad thing is, is, I don't think that would, like, uh, like, you could not have a conversation to make them, like, adjust their opinions. Oh, no. And that's okay. I, don't, I mean, I don't, I'm not, that's not my aim. Right. But, no, that's true. I mean, the, you know, the thing is, if you, <clears throat> if you had gone and told 13-year-old me that uh, some comic strip character that I draw was displeasing some dude who needed her for attractiveness reasons, I would be like, oh, that's so cool. That's going to be great. I can't wait. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> I just find it funny. <laughs> yeah. Cam, you're not artistic in the least. Everybody can be a little bit artistic. Don't hand me that. It's all it's all learned stuff, man. If you set your mind to it, you can do it. And I, I honestly, repetition. honestly believe that. Yep. I mean, when I go up against something that I haven't drawn, like if this was full body, if I was drawing her full body, it'd be taking me forever. But for the last few months, it's been very dialogue-y in this strip, so... It's just been only busts. Trust me. If you want to see if you want to see some terrible stuff, go back and look at my very first Gnome Syndicate strips at LegendOfBill.com. Buh. Wow. Go check that out. You would think you would. I mean, you just get better the more you do it, right? It's just like anything else. And you have an art degree. Yeah. Right. And that's yeah. That's exactly <laughs> right. Yeah. Think about that. <laughs> You've got an art degree from a decent university, and you're having problems drawing cartoons. Yeah, think about that. <laughs> you are 100% correct. You are 100% correct. Let's 
Let's see, what are we doing first? We're multiplying, so let's do that. Not that much. That much. Nope, not that much either. That much. Then we'll come here. Is that your chills that are multiplying? Yes. No. Are you losing control? Wait, what did I set this to? Overlay. Red always has a problem with overlay for some reason. I have not delved. Oh, I have not delved into the image math for that. Upholstery, that's that's something I can respect. Oh yeah, dude. I had uh I have my car I got an old car that was reupholstered by some people that, that did a really good job on it and I was right made me really respect the amount of work that went in. Can't imagine what it's like for like furniture. That is pretty awesome, man. I have I have a ton of respect for anybody who does a craft uh, for a living. Yeah, man, that's my whole fam. That's my whole family. My whole family were craftsmen for a living. I mean, they refinished furniture and plumbing, and you know, like it wasn't it wasn't sitting at a desk all day. It was out using their hands, making things, fixing things, doing things. It's like yeah, the, the equivalent equivalent of being a, a blacksmith back in the day. Or even which, better, private jets. What? Dude, that's awesome. Oh, so you're doing like the, the walls and the ceilings and the whatnots. That's cool, man. I bet I bet you got some stories. <laughs> yeah, that's the reupholstering, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How exactly did this burn mark get here? Yeah, wow. Well, <laughs> who did this? <laughs> yeah, can you put like a hidden pocket in that sidewall? Yeah. Don't don't look at the flight manifests. <laughs> That's cool. That's awesome. Yeah, I wish I had more work with my hand skills. It's one thing I'm going to have to learn if I ever get a house. What, work with your hand skills? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's just it's just like working on cars or anything else, man. It's At least I find that like starting a project, I always rush into it, and I was like, "Yeah, I want to get it done. Here we go!" Ah, and then I just make stupid mistakes. Yeah. Then, then I end up going, "Well, I should have been more careful." <laughs> Next thing you know, you pulled the 454 out with the transmission, and your dad's just laughing at you. That's exactly right. <laughs> that's how that happens. Oh, that was a pain. That's that's how that happens. I'm still thinking back. Removing that front cliff would have been so much easier. Uh, no, nah, man, those bolts. Oh, that's true. They wouldn't. Hey. They, they were so rusted. I had a, I had a. Uh, Toe dogs talking about a '73 Camaro that I had. If you ever see my icon, actually my Twitch icon, that that Camaro right there is the one that it was with the gray hood. And uh, he helped me pull a 454 out of it. And. Um, Which does not belong in that car. Right. No, it did not belong in that car at all. I know that it's a was... very I know it's a very common thing to put in that car, but it did not belong in that car. And uh, he's referring to the fact that when we pulled the engine, I did not unbolt the tranny from the engine. <laughs> we didn't we didn't know any better. Yeah, no, you know? I didn't know. It was the first time, like I said, jump into a project. And and that was clearing that transmission to get it out was so much work. Yeah, that, that was fun. That poor engine hoist that would could barely lift the 454, let alone the well, transmission. Was, you know, it was kind of wedged in there, so what you going to do, right? <laughs> but hey, it came out. It worked. It all, yeah. it, it all came together. The plan came together. You yeah. Know, I need to do something.
Every now and then I see posts on uh, Facebook where somebody's selling off a, a, you know, like a street strip Pontiac engine. I'm like, you know, I could pull out the, the 400 in mine and drop that in pretty easy. And then I'm thinking, well, no, by I, I mean it would take several people. Yeah. And by pretty easy, I mean it would take a couple months. Or I could just write a check. <laughs> Ta-da! See, I, I bet it's super stressful. So, Cam, doing that, I mean, is it all cosmetic stuff, though? Or is it like, like if you put this in wrong or you, you attach something wrong, the cabin could lose pressure at 20,000 feet? Like, I mean, anything, I anything dealing with the airlines, airplanes... Like I, that would freak me out. Like I, you, you got to be a pretty strong person to be able to deal with that kind of stress. Because I make video games for a living, and that's stressful. So if you were like, "All right, go put this in the plane and make sure it doesn't kill anybody later," I, psh, no, like that. <laughs> that, that that rivet better not go through the hull. Yeah, that's exactly right. I would just be like, "I, I can't do this." So big, big props there, dude. Yeah, I think, I mean, it, I imagine something like building private jets or, or furbishing private jets. There's such a, you know, the, the client wants it done now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, nobody says, oh, well, you know what, my private jet, I'm not going to use it for six months. So just, you know, take your time. Oh, if I had the kind of coin, if I bought a private jet, I would want it like ready immediately. Right? Yeah. <laughs> like, I know all the work that I've had done on all my cars, and, like, just how many times I'm just like, so, where's it at? Hey, what's what's going on? Right. What's the update? You know, and that was just minor stuff. You know, it's like, oh, I thought, I thought you said you'd have the stereo install done today. Okay, I guess I'll come back tomorrow. <laughs> Yeah, but it's not, so no. Yeah. Let's see if we can get back to... That's not what I wanted. I want you to want me. Let's, let's go up. That's a good song, too. That's one thing about this software, is dealing with the... Um, It's just it's just very persnickety about selection stuff and uh, and you got to be pretty good with the metric system. Oh yeah. Everything's in uh, millimeters, huh? Yeah, it's like how many millimeters do you want? <laughs> uh, well, I'm white and American, and my unfortunately my education did not include enough of the metric system to have a mental picture of how much that is right right i can work like, with it but yeah i can't tell you like oh i don't i don't have like a, a life relational experience to to a millimeter right like the only the only real usage of the metric system i can think of is chemistry class yeah you know yeah, we definitely we definitely used it in chemistry class. Because I mean, nobody talks about like a gallon of. <laughs> Here's a gallon. You take a gallon, a quarter gallon of, of hydrochloric acid and add it to. Right. Yeah. That just is not working like I want. Get out. Oh. Uh, yeah, FAA guide guidelines. I guess they're pretty strict about things. Oh, okay. Yeah, but then answering, to, like you said, Cam, answering to the FAA for the work you're doing? Oh, wow. <laughs> I mean, they don't even let you turn your cell phone on. Yeah. <laughs> I think what we'll do is, until Don gets a hold of it... See, that plane's on hydraulics, yo. Yeah, 
Yeah, I would hope that the hydraulic seat wouldn't wouldn't cause catastrophic failure. Maybe I could see if like it was the pilot's chair, and all of a sudden the the, the back fell backwards and he the pulled back seat, on the yeah. yoke real fast. <laughs> but that's only happens in movies. Oh yeah, I never thought about that. You gotta have some super fancy foam in there. Oh. Yeah, that makes perfect sense, man. So for everybody else watching on the other channels, Cam's saying that the uh, the foam in those seats, 10 to 20K because of the 10G, that's insane. Makes perfect sense, but yeah, stuff, stuff you don't think about, right? That's awesome. Right, cause because, I mean, otherwise, you know, you hit a, you know, you're in a big, big airplane like that that's banking hard or something, that that seat's going to wear out. Well, yeah, yeah, you're going to get, like, you know, uh, metal in your butt real quick. <laughs> that's the last thing you want at 20,000 feet. Yeah. Yeah, you want to you wanna measure 10 times and cut once, right? Yes, <laughs> I need that. That's my lesson to learn. <laughs> as you're drilling holes in left feet that aren't yours yep 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 that's true that's what always tripped me up tripped me out about that show west coast customs you remember that yeah where it, not, and not not necessarily the exhibit one where it's like yo we put an aquarium in your aquarium but no, no, the, the pimp your ride no that was such a joke yeah no just the idea that they're like like you said, Cam, making making cuts on stuff that's like, yeah, they they brought in this Bentley to customize. What? Yeah. What? Yeah, I'm just gonna cut the door off with the plasma torch. What? That would just, I I couldn't do it. I'd be like, I'm sorry, I gotta go home. <laughs> yeah, and and then it's like, okay, now how do you improve on something that that was designed by a bunch of engineers? You know? Yeah. And, and and nine times out of ten, they get some sort of body kit to put on. And, you know, like 90% of the panels don't line up. Yeah. You know, because the body kit was never designed for this car to begin with because they want this to be a unique car. Yeah. So, that I mean, that kind of stress, dude. They just make it work. You're, uh, you're, you're clearly a rock star, man. Yeah. Because no way... See, I don't even feel that stress, and and you know, it's like I have to deal with bank computers. <laughs> oh. Yeah, well, I mean, ultimately, yeah, I was gonna say like that. But we've got many lines of defense, you know. Yeah. It's not like I get to touch anything important or live. Thank goodness. I know. The changes I make get vetted many, many times before they before they make it into production. <laughs> Measure twenty times and have someone come check it. That's exactly right. At least then you got that other person to be like, dude, you see I even called him over. He said it was he right. Si he signed off, there's the signature. Yep. That is a hundred percent what I would do. That's like, you know what that is, is that's the uh, code reviews of uh, upholstery work. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we do we do code reviews. Yeah. So do you actually do, like, like oral code reviews, or do you, like, just, like, throw it over the wall and have the guy respond? Uh, it goes through, like, a JIRA tracking system. Yeah. And so, yeah, it... it like, but you don't, like, walk them through the function. No, 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 no. It's not nothing like that. I mean, that happens, but the system I'm talking about is Jira. Yeah. First yard of the night. And it's only 10.15. Not even close. That's right. Well, this one was a pretty pretty simple one to knock out, and I had gotten a little head start. So uh, I think we're all saved. I may go back in. I can't wait to see what Don does with those colors. <clears throat> yeah, that's pretty cool, man.
Yeah, I always wanted to. I always wanted to get my pilot's license, but uh, just never had the time, money, and all sorts of things. One day, maybe. I don't think I, I tell you this much though. I don't think I could work in the airplane industry or in the in the you know fly no. flight industry without having my pilot's license. Like I would be I I would be super jonesing to go get it for sure. Hmm. It would it would drive me crazy not to have it. I could understand that, especially like when you're surrounded by people who, you know, because I you think of flying as being the ultimate form of freedom. Right. Yeah. Although it's probably a lot more restrictive than than driving is, because like when I get in my car, I don't have to file it. A, uh, a driving plan with uh, some government agency to let them know, you know, you what know, car I'm getting in and where I'm driving to and how long I'll be there. You know what? But you should. <laughs> <laughs> I, pr I probably should. Most people don't need it, but I, I probably should. You're right. I, c I can't go to 7-Eleven right now because they haven't approved my plan. <laughs> so right now I'm just I'm just circling around the state <laughs> waiting for approval to enter the city of Los Angeles. Oh um, yeah, my motorcycle. I I used to I moved from California to North Carolina and uh, I did ride a motorcycle in California and I absolutely loved it. And then got here and uh, North Carolina makes it so hard to ride a motorcycle because you have to have vehicle inspections. So you have to keep it running. So then like for example, my, my tag expired in the winter when I winterized my motorcycle. So getting it to the inspection station is a little bit difficult after it's been winterized. And so then it's like, great. So now I have to wait till spring and then they want money. And it's just, they make it very difficult. Plus I have kids now, so it's a little bit difficult to pick them up at school on a motorcycle. So, but yeah, motorcycles are rush, man. I love it. I think though, you know what though, I, I think I'm to the age now where I'm, I'm going on 40 and uh, I think I'm to the age where it's going to be time to get the trike. I think I'm going to have to go get like the, uh, either the Goldwing or the Harley trike, you mm -hmm. know, and do like the, the luggage rack and the, the, uh, the sound system and the whole nine yards and just if go with the... If you can do that, you need to make sure you got a trailer that matches. Yes. Yes. That's what I'm saying. You, I, I know you're picking on me, but no, that's awesome. I'm not. I'm not. The Honda Goldwing with the trailer? That's how you and your wife can road trip. <laughs> that's exactly right. I would totally do it. Totally do it. Yeah, no no two ways about that. Put your dog in the sidecar? Yeah, a sidecar. That'd be fun, too. Leave your kids with the, uh, with the folks? Yeah, I could do it. I could see that happening. That'd be that'd be pretty fun. But you know, uh, I think when when your kids get a little older, older, they'd like to ride with you. I think they'd enjoy that. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, they love riding around in your Jeep. Those trikes, those trikes are expensive, though. I need to, I need to become a crazy successful person first. <laughs> I need I need people to want to read this drivel I'm writing here, and then they'll <laughs> they will talk about it. <laughs> So that's your uh, so that's your selling point. Bam! People, please, please come and, and look at my stuff so I can I can buy a nice motorcycle. That's my pitch. Yeah, I'm actually gonna give them the brochure for the Harley trike and be like, <laughs> here we go. This is what I'm pitching, guys. This is what I need. You could do a GoFundMe page. Oh, God, go fund a, my trike. What a horrible, horrible thing. It looks like. GoFundMe has all these like terrible illnesses, and then hey, we yep. need a motorcycle, guys. Well, no, you sell it. It's family bonding time. You know? <laughs> if I had this, my life would be better. GoFundMe. <laughs> Not just your life, your children's lives. <laughs> you know, you got you got to sell it right. This isn't for me. This is for my kids. Think of the children. All right. Well, comic is done. But what I can do, I forgot I had this open. Bam. 
Look at this weirdness. I didn't even title the stream animation tonight, but guess what? There's some Toon Boom animation that's going to happen. Cause I awesome. Need, I needed to finish up one or two things here. And it's not quite 1030 yet, so you know. Got a little running, man. Yep. Been slowly piecing this together. I got to I gotta tone down that hair flop a little bit, but... Hopefully I can get this uh, so that it will get on screen somewhere annoyingly, like like right above right above uh, camera here, like he can stand on that side of the screen and just dance for the entire stream like some people have. There you go. Look at all them keyframeses. Like I said, I gotta I gotta tone down this hair. It's too bad you can't like have him voice activated. So as you every time you talk, he starts dancing. Every time that I talk, he starts dancing. Yeah. And then the rest of the time, he just sort of goes into an idle wait. I, I could maybe do that. There has to be some sort of plug-in that's mic sensitive. That's the one right there that's just too much. I need to I need to replace this drawing with a with uh, like a a stretched drawing. See that lifts up too much. What I wish I could do is like transform this without well. Ooh, I can do that and hide it behind the ear. All right. Oh, thanks, man. You're $5 closer. Bingo. I appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. So, uh, so Cam, are you a gamer as well? Is that what brings you to Twitch usually, or do you uh, do you enjoy the creative streams? Oh, see, it's that little bump right there. Dunk. Yeah, see, that's the guy. How did I do that before? I did like that and like that. Toon Boom is so cool. Just tuck that in slightly. That's going to go down there. Dark Souls 3. I love that game. So, I don't know if you read my profile. My my day job is actually, I used to make movies. And uh, Toll Dog and I both worked at DreamWorks doing animated films like Shrek and stuff like that. Now I'm in North Carolina making video games. And so I worked for the company that made Gears of War back in the day. Um, but Dark Souls 3 is... God, I love that game. Man, it's so challenging. Um, I, think I've, I think I'm level 40-something. Or about to be level 40, I think. I'm on the last... I'm in the last area... Uh, that you can go to and I, I haven't done like a hundred percent completion by any means, but I'm pretty close and uh, I kind of did easy mode. I did a pyromancer. So it's kind of I know that's like for hardcore Dark Souls players It's like 
uh, Pyromancer's easy mode, but whatever. It, uh, I, I, I love that game. And with the amount of time that I get to play, like I said, with kids and stuff, I need easy mode so I can enjoy it. <laughs> but yeah, that game, that game causes some stress. You were talking about stress. It is not a stress reliever, that's for sure. Have you, uh, have you played that toll? You I've watched you Souls? play it. I've, yeah. And I've paid attention to the, uh, the, uh, the memes and stuff going around about, like, save points and whatnot. Oh, man, dude. It is insane. I mean, it's just so punishing. It's like, uh, um... You, I mean, you just re, you retread and you replay so much. Mm-hmm. Because it's like you you basically just memorize where all these dudes are, and and have to you know just find the perfect way to take them out. And sometimes that perfect way, even though you may know the perfect way, sometimes it will take you you know like you could kill them the perfect way ten times, and on that eleventh, for some reason something changes and they just destroy you. It's either that or you let your stress get down because you're like, oh yeah, this guy, he's a cinch. I've killed him a hundred times on my way to this other thing. And then all of a sudden, dude just steps up and lays waste. And you're like, what? No, I'm dead. What? Why? <laughs> and then that's when, that's when the rage ensues. And it's like, okay, yeah. time to stop. Yes, Cam, you're exactly right. This is the first Dark Souls game where I've actually had to use the um, the the summons as well. Like, I do not fight a boss alone. Um, I just can't. Like, I need I need the support. I need the help when I go into those boss fights. But uh, God, I love it. Yeah, it's a great game. It is really really good. I mean, they just did so well. That guy. That guy right there. See how you can see the red in there and the green? That's what's busted. Uh huh. I want to push that shape more. If I can. If I grab it from this side, it still scales up based on that point. Can I do this? I can do that. Perfect. And then do this. There we go. And now let me bring that up a little bit. And I'm still retaining volume, which is the name of the game. So I was checking up on the uh, DreamWorks lawsuit right now. Oh yeah. And I haven't seen any update on it, but I did see that the. Uh, remember that one guy who was suing over Kung Fu Panda, claiming that uh, DreamWorks had stole uh, the 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 idea from him. Yes. Yeah, I do remember that guy. And it turns out that he, uh, like so, like he had a a panda book and then he changed his name to Kung Fu Panda book or whatever you know when he saw the tr first trailer for Kung Fu Panda yeah like he planned this way 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 like when he saw the first trailer he's like hey I've got something with a panda in it right I'm gonna see DreamWorks right right and some of the uh illustrations in it were discovered to be tracings from uh he, he he claimed his his illustrations from were from 93 but some of them were shown to be tracings from a a, a coloring book that didn't uh, a lion king coloring book that didn't come out until 96 right so 
you know, so obviously he, he committed, you know, a whole bunch of fraud, you know, a bunch of stuff. And he just, I guess in November he got, he got smacked down pretty hard. He got convicted of all the, all the stuff. And nice. DreamWorks spent, like, DreamWorks spent like $3 million defending themselves from him. Right. You know, and with this being a fraudulent suit, you know, that guy is, he's pretty much. He's broke. He is. He is. He is going to be broke for a long time. Yeah, he's he's broke for a long time. All right, let's see if this looks like it's speed without the without all the shenanigans on. That feels better. Now, what I find interesting is DreamWorks spent three million dollars defending themselves from a twelve million dollar lawsuit. I guess they consider that a win. It is. You know, and you know they're not going to get that $3 million back. No, no way. No way, Jose. But they may not care. Cinema Blend has an update, maybe. Well, I know the judge was supposed to make a decision on November like, right. 18th as to whether that was a good amount or whatever. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen anything talk about that. You know? Yeah, I don't know. Just everybody was. It looks like everybody's saying that the uh, that the fifty million dollars is just. Just sort of decided. Well, she might have. She might have said that was good. There is still something in there that just feels unmotivated. Unmotivated. So we go up. I think it's that right there. Like everybody's blaming Steve Jobs when he was at Pixar. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, that's the one. Even oh. though when you, you see Catmull's, like, response and he's, you know, you know he's just as to blame. Well, I think Catmull blamed Steve Jobs initially in that first lawsuit that was Lucasfilm, Google, Apple. Right. But then when he was asked about it, he was like, yeah, do it again. Yeah. Like you, you, you artists just got too expensive. I'm like, well, I could, I would agree with him on some of them artists. After hearing how they made out, not this artist, buddy. I know. Well, that's the thing is, is you didn't come in from a big name studio, you know. You know how it is in California. It's all about the flash. Let's see how that looks. While that's playing, let's check everywhere else. That hair does have a nice little bounce to it, doesn't it? That's a little bit better now. I still think there's a little unmotivated movement in there, but uh, it's kind of hard to see this small and playing back like this because this is the OpenGL drawing of the character. Because it, when it's rendered, the images look like that, which is a much sort of cleaner, you know, look. Yeah. Uh, so we can turn the guides off now. And you, you notice things when you actually render it like the tangents on this foot, on this particular frame, on the knee right there, which is a pain. But then when you go back to OpenGL, that's what's actually performant. So, but I haven't, nice. even, I haven't even sort of like splined this out. These are all just keys and breakdowns. Like I haven't in-betweened anything yet. 
I mean, no it'll, tweening. It'll in between. It'll in between for me, but it's still it's still just as disheartening to. Uh, Oh, that's it. Right there. That little rotation. Don't like that rotation. Where are you? Where are you? Yeah, I don't like that. No. Go away. So we're down, and she comes up, and we're going down again, so this needs to be that, but I think that's the rotation that I was seeing before. So I think what we got to do is not be so literal with... Yeah, so we'll put that extra motion in between those two. And just let it live on the ones, that those three ones where the smears are. This is going to look cooler when I get more shadows in too. That fringe on the bottom of the tunic was a pain in the butt. I bet. Well, you change that tunic, like, how many times? Uh, there's four or five versions of it. Four or five different drawings of the body. Where'd you go, body? There you are. Body, body, body. Uh, one, two, three, four different drawings. And then the fringe is all up in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different fringe drawings. But that's better than a different drawing every frame, right? So your whoops, your savings is uh, pretty crazy. When you're when you're considering like you know. Uh, feature film kind of animation or traditional animation for that matter how did I have his head hooked up oh there it goes oh god I'll probably I'll probably move the head extremely lightly right there rotate back a little bit and do like that and like that and then see if I can get that line of action to follow a little stronger whoa what's that gonna look like I'm excited Oh, yeah, look at that. <laughs> oh, I love it. I'm going to set a keyframe there. And then we got to copy that guy. Put him back there. Nice. Now, let's see if this works. Oh, it does. Hey, Cam, not yet. Uh, just because I can't play it. If I play it right now, it'll play through the stream, and then I'll get the copyright notice from YouTube. So uh, I have to wait until I'm, I'm done streaming. But... Come back next time and ask me. I'll listen to it as soon as we're clear. 
normally when I stream, I end up the videos go straight to YouTube, and uh, I I end up getting like the next four hours, my phone just constantly goes off because they're like copyright violation, copyright violation, copyright violation, copyright violation, and then on Tuesday morning I have to get up and go through the video and then pull out all the audio, and so yeah, it's kind of a pain. So I'm hoping to get around it this time by getting the soundtrack, what you're hearing. Um, that's what we were talking about earlier when the stream started. And so uh, hopefully I can work around that, but I'll definitely check it out as soon as I get off. Boy, you really see that hair flop now when the head's also doing that for a frame. It may be too much at this point. But it's almost 1045 actually, so I'm going to go ahead and, uh, well, 1045 East Coast time in the States here. So I am probably going to go ahead and sign off. So everybody that hung out, whether you uh, whether you jumped in the chat or not, thank you, as usual, for joining us. Um, it's great. I love I love interacting with you guys and talking with you guys, and uh, you get to hang out with me and Toll Dog and just kind of you know shoot the breeze, while I try and get better at making the arts. So uh, I hope everybody has a great holiday. I don't know if I'll be on. I'll be traveling around, obviously heading into the weekend and uh, Christmas time here in the U.S. So uh, I hope everybody has a great holiday, and uh, hopefully I'll be back on. Uh, Monday night the 26th and uh, hopefully you guys will all have something much better to do than hang out with me on the 26th but if not you're more than welcome to uh, jump in and uh, and get to it so have a great night Cam it was great meeting you thanks for chatting and thank you very much for the donation man that's awesome I really appreciate it that's that means a lot I really appreciate it so uh, you guys have a great night and uh, we will uh, we'll see you down the road Bye-bye.